Oh, shit. This is insane. Oh my gosh. What's up, Chris? <laughs> Loida, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh my gosh, this is so nerve wracking. Oh no. <laughs> this is so nerve wracking. How are you? I'm doing great. How are things with you? Where is it that you're located? I'm in New York. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, nice. all the way on the other side. It's six o'clock on our side right now. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw the post that you did and you were out also showing a property. Yeah, right around the corner. So in between everything, I'm out moving and moving, moving and grooving, trying to catch up to you guys. <laughs> I know. That is crazy. Oh, let me cut the light on. Let me get the, got to make sure I look my very best. There you in go. <laughs> <laughs> So how, how's everything going? Right now we are staying busy, still hitting the phones. We're doing a lot of calls, expired for sale by owners. We're just, just going hard right now. Yeah. Yeah. You ready for 2021? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh man. You know, 2020 has been a, a crazy year. It's actually been um, one of my better years in real estate. Um, as far as like opportunities and everything like that happening. So, um, you know, 2021, I'm like super excited, super energized, revved up on a thousand right now. You yes. Wow. I feel like there is so much opportunity out there if you're willing to put in the work and just hustle. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's so great that you say that, right? Because I, I have a saying that everybody wants to get rich, nobody wants to put in the work. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So like I'm I'm out every I live in the office and I visit home. I always say that. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. pretty much. Live at the office and visit home. So I wanted to thank you so much, Loida. Um, before I get into any questions that I have to ask you, I just really want to give you your flowers. All right, I have to do that. You know, um, I want to thank you so much for everything that you've done for um, the real estate community, the minority community, all of everything. It, it means so much to me. I've literally watched you since I got into real estate three years ago. Um, a lot of your videos, um, cold calling, everything. So it's, it's so much of an honor to talk to you right now. It's like, I got a new shirt. <laughs> for today. Just for today. <laughs> Just for today. I got a new shirt, made sure my hair was good. You know, yeah, it was good. I, I the whole setup and everything. Cause I it, it was such it's such an honor. You don't understand what this means to me to be able to talk to one of, you know, not just one of the forefathers of um YouTube real estate, but somebody that I actually looked up to, you know, in the process of getting my license after I got the license, how to cold call, apps to use, everything. Like um, even watch, you know, deals and heels when you guys were doing that. Like I'm telling you, like I was on it. Yeah. I was on it, so I wanna give you- Yeah, thank you so much. I'm glad that, that you have enjoyed my videos and it makes me happy to hear you say that. And it's crazy because when I started to do my YouTube videos, I did it with the intention of helping others I never in a million years thought that I was going to grow on YouTube and on social media and have people from everywhere. So I'm still humble. I, I'm very appreciative of everything that you just said. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate everything that you did. It, it got me, it really helped get me to the point where I am. I'm the biggest in my company. We have over 300 agents and, you know, me having the most listings me doing the most cold calls and everything like that. I attribute a lot of that to you. I, I thank you so much, Loida. Thank you. Wow, that's awesome. Yes, of course. All right, so um, to get started, right? I, I lined up the questions. I wanted to make sure everything was good and um, try to be smooth as possible. So um, first question is, I see that you have tons of videos on cold calling, right? Mm -hmm. And there's tons of ways to lead generate. What are your favorite ways to lead generate? 
So just like you mentioned, for me, the cold calling is what I have seen I have had the most success with. My entire first year in real estate, all I did was door knock. And, and I did enjoy doing that, but I saw that over the phone, I was able to talk to a lot more people per hour. So I think the advantage that I have versus, for example, a male is that the likelihood of someone hanging up on me is much less than if it's someone with a deep voice. Mm -hmm. And we have kind of played around with that between myself and Brian to see the results. And it just happens that way. So for me, what I decided to do and focus on was making the cold calls and just sharpening my skills in terms of my objection handlers. That way, I knew that if I was very good with my communication and the way that I responded to people's questions, concerns, or objections, if I knew how to handle that and they were serious and motivated, I knew that I could get them over the phone. And that's just pretty much what my focus has been. I go after the expireds because I know that those are the toughest and a lot of people don't want to do those and also the for sale by owners. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, it's like, I'm going to do whatever people don't want to do. And oh, I've had success okay. doing that. Oh, that's dope. You know, um, I, me personally, I do my lead generation through cold calling, right? Is, is the most effective for me. Um, again, it's, it's speedy. In a sense, you know, you, you're able to dial more numbers and get in more contacts rather than door knocking, which I tried once or twice. And to door knock a hundred doors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it takes hours, if not days, you know. So yeah. you know, and I'm speaking like not even from you know what I think, it's like an experience because I've I've done it. I've I've door knocked in the summertime in a suit. Do, and I was trying to fast. I was fast. Oh my gosh! It was the, the worst experience ever, and it it was it was, it just took so long. And it was just like, oh my gosh! I could have spoke to maybe a thousand people by now, or called a thousand people by now. But you know what happens. So you mentioned that um, you go after the expires, right? Yeah. Are those your favorite type of leads to prospect? Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Because I know that those people still have some type of interest. They were already on the market for a reason. So they wanted to do something. Now they came off the market for one reason or another. Or maybe it was the agent. Maybe it was a property. Maybe it was the price. And I feel like I'm the, the real estate doctor coming in and trying to figure out what happened. So if I can pinpoint what would happen that the home came off the market and I can provide a solution then I know that I can help someone and that's kind of the way that I see it okay I um I like expires too because in my personal opinion they're easier to convert rather mm -hmm. than the FISBO um both are low-hanging fruit if that's fair yeah. and um you know both of them want to sell for one reason or another the thing is with an expired you know they're not all the way opposed to working with an agent you know, it doesn't, Correct. it doesn't typically require as much follow up and um, relationship building to get the listing as a physical does either. You know, once you're sitting at the table, they already know why you're there. Exactly. You know, it's, it's really just, am I a good match for you? Are you a good match for me? Um, do we fit for each other? Now, one thing that I personally always kind of get hung up on when I'm dealing with an expired at the listing table is the commission objection due to an agent lowballing the commission previous to me. For example, an agent will probably say they took the listing at 3% or at 4% or things like that. So now when I come and explain you know, I'm at 6% and this is why they're kind of stuck on the, well, my last agent did it for three. Why can't you do it for the same? You know, how do you respond to that? I say, well, technically your last agent did it for zero because they didn't get the job done. Now I'm sure that you don't want the same results, right? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think of the, the zero. <laughs> that, that was, I say that and they don't say anything because I'm right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, maybe 
to be fair, maybe I'm being a little too wordy with it or something like that, because I'll, I'll explain and explain and explain and like, you know, they possibly, it didn't sell last time because they possibly couldn't afford to do it. You know, a lot of buyers agents aren't going to want to co-broke on a 3% split. You know, they're not going to bring their buyers and they're only getting a one and a half percent. And they got to split that with their brokerage and then split that with the IRS, you know? So this is a big reason as to why it didn't sell. Um, so we actually want to build confidence with the buyers agents to bring their buyers. And it's just like, ah, oh, well, they did it for three. They did it, but can you do it for four? Can you do it for, it's like, mm, you know? Yeah. So usually, so. Uh, also when I pre-qualify, if that is an objection where they're adamant about, I'm not going to do it for anything less than four, and it would be a waste of time for me going, there's times that I have just canceled an appointment. Yeah. Because I stand my ground on what I offer. Wow. That's, that's deep because sometimes when I go on a listing appointment, right, Loida, and I know I'll never do it for under 3% or, I mean, uh, over 3% or over 4%. Sometimes they're just giving mucho, right? Sometimes they're just saying whatever they want to say and they can come up. But at times what I'm noticing now, well, in the New York market, it almost seems as if 4% became the new standard or 3% came, became a new standard. So you're, you're typically fighting with, with the three or the 4% or, or things like that. And it, it, what do you charge? Well, listen, you know, it's not that I'm charging anything. It's a 6% investment, if that's fair. And I'll never let a commission get in the way of closing a deal. So let's just start at the six and then go from there. Because once I show you once I show you what's going on and all the work I put in, you're going to want to pay me the 6%. You're, you're going to feel I deserve it. So let's start there. And right now it's an imaginary number because nothing's been sold. Right. Mm -hmm. So then I give them the whole spiel and things like that, but then they just get stuck up on that. Well, that sounds all good, but what's 4%, 5%, 2%. What is it? It's like, oh. <laughs> and they tell you this over the phone. No, some of these things happen over the phone for the most part. Um, as of recently, let me say that as of recently, I wanna say maybe the last two months. I haven't heard that too much prior to that, but about the last two months I've gotten that maybe six or seven times and it's just so frustrating. It's just like, ah, you know, yeah. that's not wasting any time. I'm not doing anything over 4%, just, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, I can bet that's annoying. Mm. It wow. happens though. <laughs> yeah, now, it does, unfortunately. <laughs> now, there's data that reads, right? I don't know how true it is, but there's data that reads that real estate may be ran by women, right? Or the most successful are women, so on and so forth. However, you're a proud Latina, right? Yeah. Do you feel like you're at an advantage being a woman or a disadvantage being a minority in this industry? I think there is an advantage being a woman in this industry, no matter what ethnicity it is that you are, because I feel that, for example, at the doors, more doors open for me compared to a man, just because we come off as being less threatening. Mm. Um, I feel that also our words when we are communicating and handling objections might push us a little further out when we're meeting in front of a client than maybe a man that they already assume might be a little aggressive. But they, if they don't see that coming from a woman, then that kind of throws them off. And that's my what my experience has been, where it's like, oh, I didn't see Loida coming in like that. Like, she knows what she's doing. Like, mm -hmm. we don't want to play around. <laughs> it's more like a shock factor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's an advantage. So it ultimately comes down to the woman and the confidence that you come in mm. with when you're meeting with a seller, no matter who it is, it can be a mobile home or it can be a multi-million dollar property. But if you come in owning the room, it doesn't matter how old you are or what ethnicity you are. But if you're a woman and you come in with that confidence, it definitely makes you stand out even more. Wow. So do you, do you feel like you might have to overcompensate being a, a Latina or... Or you, uh, it doesn't matter. I, have, I feel that I, I have worked so hard for, for
for me to be where I'm at with my skills and in my communication and my role playing and everything that I have done that perhaps there might be people that see me like, oh, she, she's a Latina, but she does well type of thing. But then when they see my results, like, for example, when I'm cold calling, they don't know who, what I look like or if I'm white, black, whatever it is. So I feel that it, it's more what I have to give and, and how I can provide a value or service that really makes me stand out. Wow, that's a, that's a great point. You know, um, I know for the most part from what I've seen in my experiences, right? Not just me personally, but from the people around me and the minorities around me, Black, Latino, Latina, um, Asian, whichever, you know, a lot, a lot of us feel intimidated, if you may, that um, we might not deserve to be in a $2 million condo or deserve to be in that $6 million townhouse or something like that. You know, we just like, oh, they're gonna look at us like, what are you doing here or anything like that, you know? And I typically want to go against that, right? Like yeah. I, want, I want us as a community to know that if it does have its disadvantages, make that a strength, right? We don't have to be, um, for lack of a better term, let's say like whitewash, anything like that. Like we can, we're, we're just as good if not, you know, better than another person, anything like that. We deserve to be in that $5 million co-op, that $10 million new development. Like we deserve that, just work for it, you know? And um, yeah. a big before, well, we're in 2021 now, but like I have braids now and it's not something that I've always had. I've always had like a regular haircut. And I said, you know what? And Brian actually helped with this as well with the his video on sneakers and the flamboyant blazers that he wears, the sport coats and things like that. And I, I see that and it, it, it gave me a lot of confidence and I told him this. Um, you know, I, I wanted to say, you know what? I want to let my community know that you don't have to cut your hair and you don't have to look a certain way you know, be professional, know how to conduct yourself, know how to carry yourself and be knowledgeable. And you can go anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to go, you know? So I appreciate yeah. that you said that. Yeah, and I feel like it kind of goes back to what I mentioned right before we started, where there are so many opportunities out there for you to take advantage of, but you really have to to be willing to put yourself maybe in uncomfortable situations mm. and believe in yourself and have that confidence to know that, you know, I am deserving of being here or, you know what, I can sell that, that multi-million dollar property because I have the skills and I know I can get the job done. Mm -hmm. Not because uh, you think you feel sorry for me or whatever it is. Like we can get things mm -hmm. done too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. You know, I want to have my face like on, on billboards and I deserve it, you know, because I worked so hard to get there. You know, the the thousands of hours I've I've done on YouTube watching you, Brian, Ricky, um, Chasten, everybody, um, the audio books that I listen to, the amount of cold calls, the amount of no's that I've gotten, the amount of doors I had slammed in my face. You know, I deserve it. So when I finally do get this million dollar condo there's two million dollar co-op yeah i'm going to be proud of it when i walk into these listing appointments i'm going to have the confidence because i heard no a million times already so all, the only thing i can hear is no which i heard or yes which i'm looking to hear you know and either one becomes fine with you after a while exactly you, you can't be scared of the rejection no that's part of the game in this business Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, you're, you're heavy into the app world, right? Like, you'll be like, these are the five apps to use or things like that. Um, yeah. Now, and you use, you know, different phone apps to grow your business. What is your number one favorite app to grow your business? My favorite app? Um, 
I feel that one that, that I use very frequently and it helps with the productivity and organization would be Trello and it's free. <laughs> Trello? I, I like do a lot of research with apps because just like the information that I put out, I want to help others that maybe are on a budget or newer agents try to get into these programs. So Trello is one that I found um, maybe like two years ago. And that one really helps me with organizing leads and setting reminders. And you can use it on your desktop and also on your phone. So that would probably be one of my favorite ones. That's great. I um, It's funny because there's not one specific app for me. Like um, it'll probably be an app that does everything, but I just really like it for this. And I really like this one for this. Like, um, let's say I, let's say we're talking uh, CRM, right? I use mm -hmm. Lion Desk as a CRM, and you can do everything from Lion's Desk. You can do everything from there, but I prefer to just use the texting and the video texting and the automated emails from there. Then I'll go to Excel and I organize my leads from there, and you know I'll go to like um social. Yeah. Um, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every app has a different feature that that it's very good at. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's that's what I do. So I, I spend a lot of money on apps and um let's say like lead generation tools. Like I used Redex before. Right now I'm using my plus leads, which is great for me. Um I think what 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 is your favorite to use? I use Vulcan 7. Mm. for the expires that's expensive though oh my gosh <laughs> Vulcan seven I looked at the price and I was like whoa I'm not there yet <laughs> yeah I've I've tried a bunch of different other companies so I have tried Red X I have tried uh Land Voice Espresso mm -hmm. Agent and Vulcan seven is the one in my experience has given me the most accurate phone numbers yeah um my plus leads is it, it, giving me a lot of accurate numbers sometimes you know um i'll get like the da, 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 whatever when it's like the numbers disconnected and it'd be the worst when you have it in your headphones and you're not expecting it and then it oh, just yeah. goes off. Uh, yeah fax machines <laughs> yeah it's like what do you like get in a zone when you're when you're um like, an, do you have like a specific element when you're cold calling and things like that? Uh, so sometimes before I start making my calls, I'll put some like gangster rap to get me in the mood in case hype? anyone wants to, <laughs> to, to cuss me out on the phone, but it doesn't phase me. So I usually do that before I start to, to kind of get pumped up. And yeah. then I, it almost becomes like a game where I'm trying to read like certain numbers during that day so mm -hmm. my goal for daily contacts is 40 so i just know okay how long is it going to take me before i get to that next contact so that's how i i do it for myself <laughs> yeah when um when i'm coco and i have i have like a headset and everything like that so i put my headset on so i because i could do it with regular headphones airpods but you know it just gives me that element of okay now i'm in a call center i'm cold calling so and so forth um i stand up i i don't cold call sitting down right I, I need like the air and everything like that i need to move around and i'm very animated when i'm talking so even when they can't see me or whatever i'm reacting with my hands and i'm just like walking around like huh <laughs> yeah I have a mirror in front of me too. So it's like, I'm looking at myself, making all these faces wow. as I'm talking to the person. That's crazy. I've always, you know what? After today, cause you reminded me, I'm, I'm gonna write it down right now. I, I always told myself, I need to get myself a mirror so I could watch myself. Cause it helps you with the smiling and things like that too. Yeah. So um, I've, oh, I was thinking about that again today too. It's like, Lord, you're reading my mind. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I use TubeBuddy to help with the tags. Haven't quite figured it all the way out yet, right? Besides posting consistently, are there any tools that you suggest to help grow your YouTube channel? I would say just having a, like a content calendar and knowing when you're gonna be putting out what. 
Mm. Um, usually what I like to do is that on Sundays is the days that I like to record my content and maybe once uh, every two weeks or once a month, just write down a list of the video ideas that you have and then you can distribute it between the days that you want to film and edit and things like that. Do you like, um, do you like bulk record, like record everything, maybe five, six videos in a day and then just schedule them and go out? Sometimes, but what I find myself doing is because many times I just get inspired to do a video depending on something I just went through or maybe something I read or a situation. So it never happens that I just do like three or four videos at a time. Mm. But when I do, I try to at least do two. Yeah. I, how do you, um, how do you keep in line what you're talking about? Do you like write everything down when like you want to talk about code calling? Do you like bullet point what you want to talk about in that video or do you just freestyle it? I've done both. Mm. I've noticed that when I freestyle it, especially in the past, there would be a lot of pauses. And then when I had to edit it, it's a lot more editing. But now what I do is that I try to at least have three or four bullet points that I want to make sure that I cover and I have it in front of me. And as I'm talking, I just can kind of see it from the corner of my eye and I know what, what I'm going to be talking about, but it, it reminds me. So that's, that's been helping. Wow. I, maybe I have to do that. Cause um, in my, when I put up my videos, I try to freestyle it. Right. Cause I wanted to come from the heart and things like that. And, and then sometimes yeah. like something to distract me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or my mind would just go blank in the middle of the video. And it's just like, I really got to record this over. I'm like seven minutes in, but I can't remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, because you're nervous just looking at the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, oh my gosh. You know, and in my office, my desk is like um almost completely glass around. Like this wall is like the only wall that's like a brick wall, but behind or in front of me is all glass. So like sometimes I'm doing my video thing and things like that and somebody will walk by and like they'll make a face or like something to go crazy. It threw, threw me completely <laughs> off. And I'm like, oh, I was making a good point but I just can't remember what it was. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. I'm like, <laughs> you uh, so well and then you're like, yeah, I gotta start I'm, like, over. I'm like seven, eight minutes in, and I'm like, oh, I had some real good points, but I can't never recreate that that energy. So now it's like, yeah. oh, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> oh man, Lord, you're the best. All right, so being that you're heavy into using technology for real estate, right? Mm -hmm. What tools, if any, do you use for virtual showings? For virtual showings, um, aside from just usually the photographer having them do an entire video mm -hmm. and sending that or myself going in person and just doing a, a virtual tour, FaceTiming my client. Mm. Because um, you guys are opened up all the way down there, am I correct? Or do you still yeah, have restrictions? Yeah, can't do open houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we, we can do open houses. However, it's like one family at a time or like one person at a time and things like that. A lot of people haven't received the confidence to want to be able to go in, in person, you know? And um, sometimes a video isn't the best. What I've noticed is some people may like do like a, a Zoom open house or like a Facebook live open house or something like that. Yeah. You know, I haven't toyed with it. So it's like, you know, um, how would I go about it was like a big question of mine. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I haven't done that. What has worked for me in the past. And I even had a buyer out in Florida that I helped her buy a property out here. And she bought it just based off of the videos that I did. I would myself in person go and record and then put the video together. Just because I feel that maybe if you do do like a Facebook Live or a Zoom, the quality might not be the best. Mm -hmm. So it defeats the purpose of even doing something. 
And uh, yeah, when I did that video for her, it worked out perfect, recorded the outside, the neighborhood, the inside of the house. And then she got a clear idea of the entire property. And, and that was what I have done so far. Wow. I, um, I remember I was watching one of, I think it was Brian's videos or something like that, but the team BC, right. Um, and you guys were doing a 360 video. And that made me buy a 360 camera, right? So GoPro owes you guys a check, right? So <laughs> it, made me, it made me go buy a 360 camera. So that actually helped me sell three properties. It, it's funny, I just thought of it just now. Um, uploading on YouTube, man, I'm walking straight, but people can like go up, yeah. down, left, right. And that helps a lot. So yeah, that's, that's, that's great. So talking to you just, made me remember I had one, it's crazy. Yeah. So um, in, in marathons, there's something called the wall where you feel like you can't go any further, you wanna give up, you had enough, it, that, that's it. You know, have you ever hit a wall? And if so, what was it? I think earlier on when I started as a new agent, I feel that at some point, probably right before my first year, I was making all these phone calls, but I wasn't really seeing the results as fast as I wanted them to see. And it was discouraging. I feel that a lot of us go through that, especially in the beginning. And uh, for me, I feel like that was that wall that, that made me almost question myself whether I would continue or was this even for me? Mm -hmm. But it was once I saw that, you know, I had to pretty much change my mindset and the way that my brain was thinking instead of focusing on the negative, it was more seeing the progress and, and how much better I was getting. And that's what helped me push through that wall and continue going. And here I am now. Yeah. Wow. Um, so it was like, was the rewards not coming as soon as you liked or like, were they taking too long to come? Did you have to see, did you have to get your first listing to know that it was real? Did you have to do your first closing to know that it was real? Like, what was it? Um, it was, I was making all the calls and making contacts, but I wasn't converting or no one was, no one was converting in my pipeline. And it had been a few months already. So I was just kind of questioning whether or not I was even good in what I was saying or, or, or I was questioning myself pretty much. And then once pretty much right after I changed how I thought a few weeks later is when I set a listing appointment for someone that I cold called, it was an expired. And we ended up listing that property, double ending it. And then that's when I was like, okay, good wow. thing I stuck through it and kept on going. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, um, all, all, all too often we see you know, real estate could be discouraging. It's almost like a thankless job at times. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I can't sign a listing or I can't get a closing. Something's just, is this even meant for me? Is this thing even real? Like what has to happen? Something has to give. And then a year goes by or two years go by and people don't crack 10,000 or 50,000. They just give up you know, not knowing maybe the following year, you could crack 300,000. You just got to keep at it, yeah. you know? So what, uh, three more questions for you later. I don't want to hog up all your time. I really appreciate this. And, and honestly, like, I'm still like in starstruck mode right now. So forgive me. <laughs> it's all good. So um, what has been the most effective system that you put in place to grow and or scale your business? I'd have to say having a good follow-up structure. <clears throat> I feel mm -hmm. that many times we talk to people, they tell us they either want to buy or sell, whether it's now or later on, and we write them down or put them somewhere, but then we forget about them. Mm. So something that I have done, and it kind of goes back to the tech and the apps and all that stuff, is that I use the Mojo Freeline Dialer, and I have that 
to my CRM, which is KB Core. Mm -hmm. Everything, anytime that I have a lead, I put them into a specific folder that automatically gets synced into KB Core. So now they're getting emails, automated text messages as well. And I'm also getting reminders if I set some for myself on when I need to call them or text them. So, so that's what has been working a lot for me. And then at the same time, I have also integrated uh, my mojo into Google Sheets so that I have a list of everyone that I'm, in, I'm adding to my database so that my virtual assistant can start sending out postcards every single month. So mm -hmm. in a nutshell, that's what it is. I know it was a lot. <laughs> no, 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 that was, that's actually great. I, I do somewhat of the same where I told you, like I use um, Lion Desk to automate the voice, yeah. the, the, the emails and things like that. Um, I have an eight by eight, I have an eight by eight touch campaign and a 33 touch campaign as well. And I just put people into there. And once I can't convert them with the eight by eight, they automatically go into the 33. And then it's okay, I call, um, text message, voicemail, um, video, postcard, holiday card, whatever for 33 touches. Um, to piggyback off that, is it easier for you to cold call that person or the follow-up call. I struggle with the follow-up call, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I feel that it's easier on the initial cold call because I'm not sure exactly what the response is going to be. Mm -hmm. But then on that follow-up call, sometimes I get nervous like, oh, what if they don't answer? Or what if they tell me that, no, they don't want to do anything, but then I just make the call. But yeah, the first call is the easiest, I feel. Mm -hmm. It's like, I I'd rather just cold call them and things like that. But this person already told me they're not interested. And then I'm calling them six weeks later. And mm -hmm. I'm, am I going to get yelled at? Or like, what do I say? You know, it's, it's not a specific script for that because everybody's follow-up call is going to be different. Yeah. You know, versus a cold call, you know, you could deal, make a script for that because it's kind of go, going to go down the line. If somebody told you, you know, I'm waiting until spring, Mm -hmm. to sell, you know, and it's summertime now, you call them in six weeks to try to keep that contact going. What are you going to talk about then? You know, it's kind of like. Yeah. And something also that I tell myself is that I have to make that follow up call because what if things have changed for that person and their situation? And if I don't call, but some other agent calls and it just happens to be the right time and they get the the deal because I didn't I didn't feel like calling or was too scared then mm. that's not something that I would let myself do so that kind of pushes me to to make that call because you never know you never know you never know it's really all about timing and again back to what you said confidence you know you got to be yeah. okay with either of the two happening he's saying no they're saying no exactly. saying yes you know either one of the two is fine mm -hmm. now um in your opinion, what is the most challenging listing objection to overcome? Uh, let me think. Probably the commission one would, would be the one that gets everyone. Mm. And there are the sellers that are adamant about what they're going to pay. And even if they know that you're the best choice, but, but they don't want to pay no more than 3%, they're willing to not work with you. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I feel that I have dealt with that many times where I'm not going to work with someone that doesn't value what I have to offer. And, and we know what we bring to the table. So we'll just walk away. So we have walked away from business. I have turned down sellers that, that tell me they want to sell, but if they're unrealistic, uh, either on the price or, or the commission, or they don't see the value in me and they just think, oh, I'm just going to talk to 20 agents and whoever's the cheapest, that's who I'm going to go with. Mm -hmm. then that's someone that I don't even want to sit down or, or interview with, because if that's already their mentality, then I know we're not going to get anywhere. Do you, do you like, like open listings? Like, do you work with open listings? No. Yeah. That's not something I, I am an advocate for, you know, I'm going to promote your listing more than likely, we're not going to agree on a commission structure. Jim from down the block can just come and like, it's, it's, it's not something that's, that, yeah. that, that I'm an advocate for. That's crazy. So yeah. my, 
No, I don't do that. And and I tell the seller at the end of the day, if they bring that as something that I can do, I say, well, you know what? Your neighbor, Jim, in the, the next street over, they have actually hired me to get the job done for them. So my priority is to help them before I even help someone who doesn't even want to consider me for hmm. the business. So, and then I just kind of leave it at that. Yes, just leave it there like an open space for them to, that's, hmm. The open listing objection. It's, it's kind of like, you know, if everybody has the listing, nobody has it, you know? Yeah. It, exactly. It is what it is, you know, sometimes. Now, my last question to you, Loida, is what is your craziest real estate story? My craziest real estate story was actually a for sale by owner. Um, well, actually, I have a lot of crazy ones, but this is the, <laughs> the scariest one and craziest. I had set a, a listing appointment with a for sale by owner, and this was like two years ago. I called him on a Saturday night. It was about 8.30, 9 o'clock, because I figure I'm going to call Fizbo's late at night because they're going to get annoyed, and then I'm going to see, I'm going to tell him, you know, that's why you need an agent so that you're not handling the calls this late. <laughs> anyway, we had a long conversation. I ended up meeting with him that following weekend and everything was going great we had the the listing presentation but then he brought up his friend that was the real estate guru a neighbor that's not even a real estate agent so he's like oh my friend the, the real estate guru he said that you guys are charging too much and all this other stuff mm -hmm. so he said okay you know what bring him over so the guy came over he was already like very aggressive giving us dirty faces and he just started talking talking shit to us saying oh you guys are here because you don't have any business you don't know <laughs> what you're doing all this other stuff and i was i was trying to keep keep it cool and i was with my partner kevin and he was already kind of getting a little agitated mm -hmm. and the guy he sat down at one point, it was kind of like going back and forth. The guy got up and Kevin was like, wait, what? You want to fight? I have gloves in the car. <laughs> but the guy thought he said, I have a gun. So he gets up. It didn't go well. We ended up, I mean, I ended up getting Kevin, pulling him from the side. He had glasses. He had taken off his glasses and put them in the counter. I grabbed his glasses. I got him. We ran out of that house because the gentleman, the real estate guru, ended up like putting his hand in his pocket. And I thought, what if he has a gun? But so we just, like ran out of that house. <laughs> but before we left, I think I said, oh, well, if you guys change your mind, you, you know how to get a hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the craziest thing. I reversed my way out of that street to make sure that I would not drive in front of that house because I, I did not know what was going to happen. <laughs> that was the craziest. Yeah. That was a scary. I was so scared that day. <laughs> That's hilarious. I don't have anything on, on that level. I, I don't have anything <laughs> on that level. The craziest thing was, well, one of them is um, I was doing a listing appointment in Manhattan for a co-op. And this lady, she had a two bedroom, but she was trying to put the third bedroom as a bedroom, but it was literally a closet. It was a walk-in closet. So, oh. so, I'm oh. like, so I'm like, you can't market that as a bedroom. It's a walk-in closet with a bed in it. <laughs> you know? oh like you literally open a door and the bed <laughs> is right there. <laughs> so I'm like, you can't market that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, you can't market that as a bedroom, you know? So then um, she had another realtor before me um basically say okay we'll sell it let's say at a five hundred thousand dollars right and anything that i make over that i'll keep which is illegal in new york you know you can't do that you yeah. know so if he sold it for six hundred thousand he keeps a hundred thousand gives her 500 and she signed it so i'm i'm trying to tell her like you can't like he can't do that that's wrong that's illegal you know um trying to work something out with you on the side. No, it doesn't work like that, you know? It's gonna be a percentage of this, that, and a third, and this is how it's gonna work out of the final sales price, blah, 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 blah. She says, that's how real estate agents work. 
I'm like, it's not that, that's how they work. You know, this is just him. She's like, Christian, get out. And I'm like, I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, hold on. I'm just, I had to, I had my listing presentation like in front of me, my packet and everything. And I'm, and I'm like, wait, just let me get out. And I'm like, well, I need you out and I need you out now. And she starts banging on the table. Now, get out now. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I get up and I zoom out. Wow. Yeah, sounds like a, that's crazy for sure. I'm like, I don't <laughs> I'm not staying in. I'm not trying to convert no more, no nothing. Oh, and she no. was like the sweetest lady in the beginning. So it caught me off guard. I'm like, you know, the, yeah. get out, huh? <laughs> it just was Yeah, yeah, it's like a 180. You're like, who is this lady now? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, huh? Like, are you serious right now? Oh man, Lord, that was, wow. Lord, you've been so great. Thank you so, so, so much. I appreciate you. And again, I love everything that you're doing, everything that you've done and everything that you will do. You mean a lot to me and my growth in this company. I feel like I couldn't have gotten where I am without you. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everything that you have said about me. It makes me happy that, that you have enjoyed all of my videos and I have found them very helpful. Yeah, this is, listen, this was one of my bucket list interviews. Like, I, you know, I spoke to Brian last week. Me and Brian did um, one last week. Um, spoke to Chase, and I did one with Ricky. But this one right here was like, I need to talk to Loida, you know? So it was kind of like the, you know, when you get in, in a groove of things, whatever. So let me talk to these people right here to build my confidence to talk to Lloyd, you know, so I, can, yeah. I can be prepared. Please, Lloyd, to say yes. Like, you're the one I really want to talk to. I'm like, okay, Chase is it yes. Maybe Brian will say yes. Okay, you did. Okay, Let's see you if yes, okay, great. <laughs> Let me talk to Lloyd yeah. now, you know. Uh, you guys, you guys are so great. You guys really inspire me. You guys are inspiring so many more people, you know, beyond what you guys, you know, consciously realize you guys are doing amazing, you know, and I'm really proud of what you guys done, what you guys have overcome. And again, I've been watching you guys' video for years, years. So, yeah. so trust me, I've seen the growth and everything and also it inspired me to start doing the YouTube thing myself. So, Thank you Good. so, so, so much, Loida. I love yes. you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me on here. Of course. And when I go to your side, Cali, everywhere, yes. love to meet you. Take you guys out to eat. Dinner's on me. And we chop it up in person. That would be so great. Yeah, definitely. And likewise, whenever we end up going over to, to New York, we'll have to get together. Definitely. Thank you so much. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Good luck and stay healthy. Blessings. You too. Have a Bye. Great.